I get asked these questions all the time. Maybe you've wanted to ask them yourselves. Today, I give you 10 answers to the most 10 common questions around van life and van travel. It's a rapid fire question and answer from viewers like you. We're gonna talk about lifting the van, safety, waste tanks, freshwater tanks, being stealth, taking a shower in the van, full-time travel, and urban camping. Question number one comes from HMAN2561. Wants to know, traveling with fresh water, do I do it with a full tank or a half a tank? It's a great question. It really depends where I am. Am I in or around known territory with easy access to resources like water, gasoline, and even dump stations? In which case, if that's a yes, then I travel with a half tank or less, never really going below a third of a tank of gas or fresh water. If I'm in an unknown territory, though, I follow my 50% tank rule, which means if I get to 50% on gasoline or fresh water, I fill up because I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't want to get stranded. And for uh, black, I empty at two thirds if I'm, again, in unknown territory. But if I'm in known territory or know where I'm going with a resource, I empty at full. Uh, he continues along. How long do I go until I'm empty? That too depends. So I'm a solo traveler using my toilet for number one, number two all the time, unless I'm in a place where I can do number one, but I only do number two in my, in my van. Uh, so as a solo traveler, I can go five for sure, probably up to seven days, depending on how much uh, I'm putting in the tank at a given period of time. A couple that's probably gonna divide by half, again, depending on how you're gonna use the tank. And when I empty my tanks, it's really simple. It takes about 10 minutes or less. And um, when you think about that, you're really doing it four or five times in a 30 day period, not too bad. Next question comes from Anne's Senior Adventures. She's curious about gas mileage and how does, affect, how does that affect it by carrying water? Well, a gallon of water weighs about eight pounds. I have 18 gallons of fresh water, which is about 144 pounds with a full tank. Nine gallons on the fresh, half full that would be, it's about 72 pounds. So for less than the weight of a human being, I really don't think it makes a giant difference. Because I'm hauling around 8,600 pounds of house, I'm not really sure whether 72 pounds or 144 pounds of fresh water is really gonna make a meaningful difference. I monitor gas mileage by not punching it out of a stoplight or a stop sign, easing off so that I'm not um, unnecessarily burning up fuel. Good question. Okay, the next question comes from Pine 32A. They want to know, am I going to the Super Show or not? That would be the Florida RV Super Show 2023 in January in Tampa, Florida. The answer is yes. I am so excited to be headed to the Super Show. I think this is my fourth or fifth year even. And uh, we are going, it's America's largest RV show. They're expecting nearly 100,000 people to attend over those days. To make this even more exciting is we are doing a Go Small Live Large Roundup on Thursday, January 19, uh, 2023, at the Lazy Days Winnebago Travado Display from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. Join us for a roundup meetup. I call them roundups. And we actually have Volta, Jack Johnson, co owner and chief technology officer of Volta, who makes the Pier 3 lithium system that I run around in my rig in. He's going to join us, so bring your lithium questions for Jack and let's shake hands. See you in January at the Super Show. The next question comes from Slow Glam 805. They want to know when is a good time to shower in the van, day or night? It's a good question. And it really depends on what camping location you're in, what the lighting conditions are outside, and your modesty level. Let me explain. So if you're at a campground and you can cover your, your windows in totality, if you're really into privacy, um, you can have the lights on or off uh, on the inside based on what the lighting conditions are on the outside. However, if you're in an urban camping setting, or it'd be street camping, or Cracker Barrel, or even a parking lot, um, I would prefer to do that in the daytime because I, as I have the interior lights on, uh, I don't want, it's much easier to see inside when it, it's a dark condition and you are having the lights on, in which case you have to cover up all your windows. Certainly if you're on the, in the modesty, uh, mode. Uh, I personally um, would do it in the daytime. I wouldn't cover all the windows, just the, the back area. And um, I would orient the rig so I am uh, have as much privacy from the front cab as possible without covering up all the windows. Here are the steps I would follow to shower in my van. Heat water, lock the doors, 
cover the windows as necessary, uh, prep for the shower, meaning get it clean, get your towel ready, etc. Prep your clothes, shower quickly. It only takes a few minutes because you're going fast. It's a Navy shower. Um, dry yourself, dress yourself, and then go. Uh, I've done this many times in crazy places like Cracker Barrel lots, Walmart lots, golf courses, parking lots, even on the street. And let's, let me tell you, until you've actually taken a shower in your van, you don't know really what you're missing because I think it's just part of the total van experience. Next question comes from Patrick Arneson, 7486, wants to know how do I secure the van when I'm leaving for a few hours? That's a great question. Safety is probably one of the top concerns for many when uh, RVing, particularly a camper van, particularly if you're solo, male or female. What I do is I park the van as you would a car, meaning you choose a good area, you use common sense, you be aware, be confident, but not frightened. And tips to ward off break-ins, as Patrick wants to know, I would say don't leave valuables in the front seat, close the blinds, in the van cabin as necessary. Lock the van, which is kind of obvious. If you're in the nighttime, park in a lit area, not a dark spot. And in daylight, or nighttime for that matter, park in an area where there is some traffic so you're not totally alone. Uh, that always gives me a degree of comfort. And if it's a sketchy area, you just simply move along. Next question comes from Pam E. Ladd 4116. Wants to know, how do I find the space in the Winnebago Travado 59G floor plan, which is what I run around in, versus the 59K Travado by Winnebago? She's considering buying a G and wants to know how do I find the space? Great question, let's show you. And the reason it's a really important question is because you need to think through why you want to travel in a camper van specifically in the first place, because the floor plan should enable your why. What am I talking about? So in my Travado 59G, cab seats clearly. I call this the great room. So I have a permanent table, swing out extension, extends almost the width of the van, about four feet or more total. This can collapse into a second bed to put one or two people in it. I have a massive galley, a microwave, fridge, freezer, wardrobe, and this space over here above galley cabinetry, cooktop, sink, more cabinetry down below, so this would be living area number two is a full-size galley. Living space number three is I have a Murphy bed. So this lays down like this. It's a four by six bed that can sleep one or two people. And I have all this garage storage space back here, which is pretty amazing. And with a bed up, I have this big hallway and access to the back of the van, which makes it feel really big because I have all the way to the door to call living space versus it being cut off about here for a bathroom. My bathroom is off to the corner really huge, one of the largest in a class B space, wet flush toilet, real shower, real sink. I do all my real business in here. The door closes and this goes out of sight, out of mind. The point being is this floor plan works really well for me because I wanted to live full time having a permanent table, super important. I can carry one or two people with me and sleep comfortably, which is really great. This floor plan works because I thought through how I want to do it and what floor plan enables that why? So a little bit of a knock on the K floor plan, you're kind of living in your bedroom. You've got a galley right here. You have two twin beds that are right behind you. One here and then one here. And again, the bathroom's all the way in the back. So you're kind of living in your bedroom the whole time. It's very popular because it's open, but for an effective space planning usage, I think this floor plan is a little underrated, um, but that's just me. The important thing is, why do you want to travel in a camper van? How does the floor plan enable your why? That's the big deal. Question number seven comes from Ed Preston1635. He states that a van is never stealth. Uh, Ed, I have to disagree with you, sir. Um, he's referencing the video van tour of Sherry out of Wisconsin, her embassy RV, and we start on the outside. And what you'll notice, unlike most RVs, Sherry's Embassy RV has no awning, no waste tank valves, no solar panels, no water inlets cut into the side of the van, no speakers on the exterior, no ladder, no bike rack, as a very slim AC on the top of the van. One might even think it's like a limousine van coach shuttle bus. And if you compare that to a traditional camper van, which has an awning, 
solar panels, probably a wine guard up there, water inlets, tank valves, speakers, ladders, tire rack, a big old AC hunking thing hanging on the back roof. By comparison, the embassy is pretty stealthy. I get your point, Ed, but I think any van is questionable these days unless it says Amazon or a plumber van on the side that somebody might be using it to travel in. You just need to be discreet and by having a van without all that stuff on it, you are certainly more stealth, in my opinion, than a traditional camper van with all that accoutrement put onto the rig. Thanks for watching though, Ed. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for taking time. Thanks. Hey, if we're meeting for the first time, howdy. My name is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large, all about the camper van travel experience. Very glad you're here. If you're new to the channel, type in NEW. Let me know where you're watching from. And if you're a loyal audience friend, thank you for watching this video. What we try and do here is help you be a better camper and traveler in your camper van, whether you're no time still researching, part time taking cool trips, or even full time travel like myself. Question number eight comes from J.A. Fletcher 5105. Wants to know why I state that the best money I spent is lifting my van. It's a great question. One word is confidence confidence that I'm not going to have any problems with curbs, obstacles, parking stops, driveways, back roads, bad roads, and I'm able to travel in confidence because my rig is three inches more off the ground than it was before I lifted the van. Before it was about six and a half inches, now it's around nine, and the most vulnerable parts of the van are underneath the uh, chassis, which is the black tank for toilet waste, fresh water tank, gray water tank and the most important and expensive part of the van to me is the Volta system. The battery box was hanging about six and a half inches off the ground until I lifted it and now all that is three inches higher off the ground so the confidence of ground clearance was a huge thing. It cost me three thousand dollars about two years ago October 2020 uh, off highway van in Salt Lake City did the uh, modification and hit them up on their website, Off Highway Van. They now have uh, uh, in, uh, outfitters around the country, so you don't need to go to Salt Lake. Um, if you hit them up, uh, tell them Scott from Go Small Live Large uh, sent you, and they'll take really good care of you, just like they did me as well. Three grand to lift the van three inches, best thing I did. Many of you have done the same thing, and you say the same thing as I do. Next question. Our second to last question, question number nine, comes from Katie May one It's talking about home base. Uh, do you have land there? She thinks I'm full-time in the van. What am I doing at home base? Uh, thanks for the opportunity to clarify. This is kind of a biggie because every month I see another full-time YouTuber around RV travel, drop out, bought a house. That is not me. Let me explain. Home base is in su Southern Florida, West Palm Beach area. Uh, it's about an hour north of Fort Lauderdale. Um, I do not own any land. I do not own any properties. I personally have sold all those off under my name. However, my partner Kyle has three Airbnb houses that he runs, has a fantastic business. So while he runs our Airbnb business, I run our RV YouTube business, and we have kind of come up to this plan to build empire, which is pretty awesome. The houses are 80 to 90% full, so even when I'm at home base right now, we go from house to house, I stay in the van. Why? Because I sleep best in the van. It's the craziest thing. I've just gotten so used to my bed, my van, the small space. It just works really, really well for me. Our last and final question, question number 10 comes from Deborah Lurie, or is it Curry, 3023, wants to know how to find a safe place. She's talking about urban camping. And Wendy Butte 8907 has a similar concern. She's worried about being followed back to her RV. So I totally understand the uncertainty. It kind of goes with uh, ladies, gentlemen, both. Um, Deborah, I've made three recent videos on urban camping. Uh, street camping, discreet parking is really what it is. And I would reference those videos. Then I did one in a small town, Bardstown, uh, Kentucky. We'll put that right here for you. And then I did a two-parter on overnighting 24 hours living in a parking lot in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Lots of tips on how-tos on, on street camping and choosing a spot. So please check out those videos. What I would recommend is to learn from those videos practice and then strengthen your resolve on doing that with comfort. As far as Wendy goes around being worried about being followed to the van, uh, I would give similar advice, which is be aware of your surroundings, use common sense, practice in small towns first. I think I just have had better luck and I always enjoy small towns better. Again, learn, 
practice, gain your confidence. Please do not let fear stand in the way of discovery. It's been one of the greatest things for everybody I've talked to in the RV uh, traveling world that getting out of your comfort zone a little bit has stretched them and made them a better person. Now, unless it really stretches you way beyond your comfort zone, for me, climbing a mountain with a rope and my hands, not gonna do it, not even interested. In which case, just cross it off your list so you don't stress out about it. So I hope that was helpful answering the 10 most common questions I get about traveling in a camper van, whether you're still researching or traveling around, hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know below the answers to your, the same questions and how you treat this differently. If you haven't seen the video on the five joys of camper van travel, you'll wanna see that. You might be surprised by the number one answer. And until we see you again soon, I wish you to journey on and peace be with you. We'll see you soon.